Welcome to the Solid Game University channel. This video's topic will be machine setup. This is actually a, um, a follow-up to the previous machine setup video. Um, a lot of customers, they've seen the video and know how to set up a, a, a fixture inside a solid cam, but how do you actually bring in the solid that represents that fixture in the first place? So you'll see on the screen here, we've got my part. So I got my target and my stock already defined. And uh, that's under our, our solid cam manager. This is where you, you assign the stock and the target. This is where you add tool paths. You can actually go back to SolidWorks, get some SolidWorks functionality by clicking on this icon here called the Feature Manager. You see here that shows the solids currently on the screen, our design model and the cam part. Um, you can actually add solids to this. This is a SolidCam external file, so we're essentially still inside of a SolidWorks um, assembly. So you can actually add parts to it by going to Assembly, Insert Components, and then browse to where you keep your component. So in this case, I've got my solid model of my vice inside of a certain folder. Okay, we'll click on that, click open. And as soon as I choose a solid, it actually floats around following my mouse until I click anywhere on the virtual space. So for instance, if I just click it over here, there we go. So my vice is floating in space. Now, adding a solid to this is not enough. We actually need to mate it to the part. We actually need to tell it the relationship between uh, my target, my stock, and where this fixture will be sitting. Otherwise, it's just floating in space. I can continue to grab it and just float it around, and I actually wanna tie it in, I wanna anchor it down. So there's a couple of tricks to do that. Uh, as a vice, we're actually probably gonna to wanna to, uh, close these, uh, these jaws a little bit. So I'm gonna right click on the actual assembly model that represents the vice, and just click on Make Subassembly Flexible. Because right now, if I don't do that, the jaws are stuck where they are. So I'll just click on Make Subassembly Flexible, meaning now that I can move that around as well as move the solid. Okay, but that's still floating in space. So we actually should add some mates to tie it right down to the, uh, to the stock or the target. So again, under Assembly, we'll click on Mate. And the mates on the side here, they're very basic geometric um, mates, uh, relationships. You've got your coincident, your parallel, your perpendicular. Um, a lot of these are gonna be very self-explanatory. For instance, if I say I want to do a coincident mate, meaning that the f this face is gonna to touch this face, which makes sense because that's the jaw. As soon as I click on that, those two are clamped together. If we just kind of look at it from, from the side view, those are coincident, they're parallel, but also they're coincident, meaning that um, if I move this around, the vice will actually have to stay coincident with that. They're sliding against each other. And the way we do this really is we just continue until we tie down all the directions. So right now we've tied it down in the Y direction. It can't actually move back and forth in the Y direction. Any movement you see here is really is just moving in the X and the, uh, and the Z. Uh, so next is we can do a advanced mate which is actually, it's called advanced mate, but it's, it's just a further expansion of this whole relationship. For instance, I wanna be able to center my, my stock in that vise, centered around there. Uh, and the easiest way to do that without choosing a plane or anything like that is just to choose the width mate, because what I'm doing here is I'm just saying, sandwich two sets of faces around another two set of faces. And the way to, to show that how that works is really just to do it. So I'm gonna choose this face, and this face off the stock. And I want that to be equal distant on both sides, centered between this face of that jaw and this face of that jaw. And as soon as I click on that, you'll see the jaw moves into place and now it's perfectly centered. So we're, we are set up in the Y direction and we're set up in the, the X direction. We still need to set up in the Y direction or the Z direction. So uh, we'll go back to standard mates. And I could uh, do a couple things here to say, you know, it's sitting flat on something. If I had models that represent the parallels, in this case, I don't have models that represent the parallels, but I do know how much of the jaw is, is gripping this, this uh, stock. So I'll actually use a distance mate. What this is, is essentially, I'm just telling it how much of, an, of, um, of a distance between two faces I'd like to, to uh, anchor this thing. So let's just say we're holding it by a quarter of an inch. And that actually translates as a distance between that face at the top of the jaw and the bottom of the stock. 
So you'll see that that just pushed it into place. And if we zoom in, it's actually holding it by a quarter of an inch. Perfect. All right. So I mentioned before that the subassembly that represents the vise, this jaw, I wanted to float for this exact reason. Because if I had left it as is, it actually is interfering with the stock there. We need to actually move that out. So I'll move it out here. And again, all we're doing here is just adding another mate. So we'll go back to mate. In this case, we'll do a coincident mate between this jaw face and this face of the stock. You'll know you're done as soon as you're back to this window. And when you grab something and try and click and drag it, it doesn't move. It gives you that little warning that it's fully defined, meaning that everything is stuck in the XYZ direction. Uh, also, rotations in XYZ. So you might need to actually make sure that you anchor it in a certain way so that it can't rotate at all. So um, that's it for setting up the stock, or sorry, setting up the, uh, the fixture. Now, that's what would happen before you get to the other video. Now you can actually set up that fixture. Um, so in the other video, you saw that you can come to the feature manager, define a fixture, choose your solids, and give it a name. I actually skip ahead and I go to right to the machine setup. And you'll see in this window, this is similar to the other win the other video where we have our coordinate system. And we're gonna tie that into a fixture. Right now in my fixture list, I don't have anything, but I do have these three dots. So as soon as I click on these three dots, it brings me to that fi fixture manager screen anyway. So I can still define my fixtures by solid, just like you saw in the other video. Um, if I go and I choose each individual solid, I could do that, just like I would with my stock and my target. I could just click on any one of these. But to skip ahead, because we have a full assembly that represents this fixture, I'll go to CAD selection, and then go to my feature tree right here, and here's my whole entire sub-assembly. So I just click on that, click Resume. It chooses all the solids there. Now that includes the bolts and all that kind of stuff that's in there. If you don't want that in there, you can unselect it from this screen. Click the green check mark. There's my clamping fixture. It's assigned to my, my Mac position. And if I just click that little eyeball symbol, we'll be able to see that that is set up as a fixture for Solid Verify, for machine sim, that sort of thing. Okay. And there it is. The purple represents the fixture. So that is a very simple um, mating of solids if you have rectangular solids. Now, what if you had any kind of curvature? Well, um, in the next half of this video, I'm going to show you how we would do that with curvature. So just switch my parts out. So we've got a curved part probably turned. We're going to put this on a mill for broaching. We're just going to do that broach right there. Again, I can go to my feature manager, go to my insert components, browse, and look for that vice once again. Again, it's just going to be floating in space. So I click there. And we can set this up once again. So we'll go mate. This time I will start with my distance mate of 250. And we'll do it from that face to the bottom face of the part. Okay. But like I mentioned in the first half of this video, that's just floating in space. The only thing that it's really staying is a quarter of an inch away in those faces. Now, there's no flat face here for you to choose for coincident or anything like that. Um, there's a couple of things you could do. For instance, if we go back to the screen here, and if you recall, we should make this flexible. So now that the jaws move. Okay. So with the jaws moving, if we go to mate and we say tangent, we can add the tangency between that face and that face. Now you can see that it's actually tangent to that face, but not to the other face. So to fix that, we'll just click on that and that once again. And now the jaws should be wide enough to hold that piece. So that's how you can close the jaws to, to make them tangent there. Now, if you had soft jaws, you can make tangency with the, the curvature of the, of the soft jaws as well. Um, 
but I don't have those here, so we're just going to work with what we have. Now, finally, it would be the width mates, just like we did before. Uh, but in this case, there is no other surface here. There's only the one circular surface. So I don't have anything to choose for my, my width selection. Well, if I start with these faces first, I essentially still make that little sandwich, that little bracket, and I can tell it to be equidistant, um, centered around the cylindrical face. So even though there's curvature, there's still going to be a definable uh, equidistance from that, that circular face there. Okay, and if we jump out of the mates, it's not currently defined because all I told it to do was to be tangent. I didn't tell it to actually stay seated anywhere. So that's what I was referring to before. This is actually a rotation around the z-axis. So in this case, what I could do is I can make another mate. Let's say that is parallel the back face of the keyway with one of the sides of the vise. Again, it just means it's parallel. So those two surfaces are parallel, and by doing so, it is now fully defined. And I can go through and do the same thing I did before. I can go to Machine Setup, click in the empty space here to get my three dots, which brings me to my Fixture Manager. CAD selection brings me to the screen. I just choose the subassembly that represents my fixture, brings in all those solids, and now I have defined a fixture. So like I said, this is a good companion to the other video. So I would suggest you watch the other video to see how it was done um, to, to do various solids and that sort of thing. If you have any other questions, you can give us a call at the main tech support line at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. And uh, watch the other videos on the channel to see the other basics of SolidCamp. Thanks for watching.